Dad? Her voice echoed in the darkness. Uh, hello? Someone here? Oh, there's a lot. What is reports? Books? What? What is this? Oh, it's another one of these machines. It's the radio transmitter. Uh, another dead end. Of course, he's not here. Just another machine. Arthurson, a small town, seemingly like any other, nestled in a valley between two mountains, blind by lustrous forests and perched on the edge of a pristine lake. Yes, Arthurson had it all. A main street with shops and a place to sip coffee, schools, a college, a church and a police station. The kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. But you won't find it anymore. For Arthurton is now the town that disappeared, the Enigma reports. What? Where once stood a city bustling with life, now lies an empty crater. How could a town suddenly and completely vanish from the face of the earth? And if it could happen to Arthurton, could it happen to your town too? Scientists are baffled. Church attendance is at a record high. Is this a sign of the end of the days? The end of days? Tonight, we attempt to answer the question. What happened to Arthurton? What is this? Is this a show? The Enigma Report investigation starts now. What? Danny stared at the screen, ast astonished. Arthurton? Disappeared? It didn't make any sense. But of all the strange things she'd seen, one stood out more than the others. There was something at the end of the tape. Uh, let's, uh, so we can pause it. Uh, let's just... Wait. At the end of the tape, like where? Here? There! There's something hidden in the static. Uh. Can't really. Don't really know what I'm doing. Oh, wait. Dad! You are alive! It worked. Find Zazer, need help. Oh no! I better get out of here before I'm crushed to death! Alright, let's go. Run, run, run! Oh no, it's closing. Shit. Nice. Ooh. Oh my god, they found us. Alright, let's go. It's time for the reveal. Who the hell is the man in black? Or flee, uh, flee. What, how am I gonna fight him? St stay away from me. 
I know what you've done. I'm not scared of you, you creep. Oh no. Oh god. Is it gonna be our dad? <laughs> Please don't tell me that. Backed into a corner with nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Was this the end for Jenny LeClue? Wait, could it be Dean Strasbury? No. <laughs> He's dead, right? I don't know. Oh my god. What? What the f- what happened? What the... Did they get struck? Yes! Nice! Susie? Keith? You came back! I had to. Jenny choked back her tears. She had lost count of the number of times she'd almost died today, and it was starting to take its toll. Let's get out of here before he wakes up. No, wait. Keith, this could be the man who killed your father. We should really go. This could be our only chance to find out who he is. Yeah, definitely. Open. Let's find out who he is. Please, please, please. <laughs> it won't matter if we're buried alive. Don't you want to know? It doesn't matter. What? Look. Oh wow, what? Damn it. Let's get out of here. That's what I've been saying. The truth is no good if we're dead. I said that too. It doesn't matter who said that. Let's go already. Yeah, definitely. How could the guy just disappear like that? What the hell? Who the hell is he? Oh my god, so many more questions. <laughs> Our three inter interprets. Uh, adventurers made their escape across the graveyard on the far side of town. Behind the twin peaks of Arthurton, the sun began to rise, but this night had not yet ended. Beneath them, the ground shook and grumbled. Deep in the bowels of Arthurton, something stirred. Oh god, is this how the town disappears? It just gets swallowed up by earth? Uh, Jenny recounted the thrilling story of her entire adventure. She told Susie and Keith about Professor Zazer and his experiments truth behind the tragic accident in the mines, and now she discovered that her father was alive. But she left out one critical detail, the town had that disappeared. How would they react to such an unfathomable, uh, unfathomable revelation? Would they even believe her? She wasn't sure she believed it herself. What an incredible adventure! Although, I think the greatest discovery today has been our friendship. <laughs> You never stop, do you? All these trials have really brought us together. And now that you and Keith and are friends again, we can form our very own mystery solving club. Uh, Keith is pedaling really, really quickly. <laughs> Look at him go. It's just a shame we didn't mask the man in black. So what's our next step, fearless leader? There's something about this case that still doesn't add up. I need to find my mom, before the cops do. But she could be anywhere. No, she's gone to Widow's Drop. Where? Widow's Drop? But I have no idea where that is. It's certainly not on any map I've seen. That's because it's not a place. What? Yeah. It's a plant. My dad has had a... Uh, he grew one in his greenhouse. He had to separate it from all the other plants. They all started to shrivel up. Oh, have you ever felt that a flash of pure inspiration? The sudden feeling of everything falling into place? It's the moment a great detective lives for. Oh, she puzzled it all together. An epiphany! Keith? What day do you take out the trash? What? What day does a garbage man come? Oh, um, Friday? Why? Of course. It was right there the whole time. Denny! 
I know where my mom is. Jenny. And I know who killed Dean Strasbury. Jenny. Look out! What? How, who? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't quite get that. Who killed Dean Strasbury? How does she know? Oh my days. Oh my, oh my days. She gone, uh, she's gone crazy. We survived. <laughs> yeah. We made it. I have to go back. Go back? But we just got out. Uh oh. A little birdie told me I'd find three unruly kids out after curfew. Oh no. Damn. Stealing, breaking and entering, destruction of property. You're all in a heap of trouble. Jenny, I can't say I'm surprised to find you here. But Keith, Susie, I expected more from you. I'm ruined. <laughs> Sheriff, this is station. Are you there? Go ahead, station. Susie, Keith, I need you to create a distraction. What? There's no time to explain. Where are you going? You'll just have to trust me. Okay. No. Susie, please. No. Not unless you say it. Say what? After everything we've been through, you know it's true. What are you talking about? Now it's hardly the time for this. <laughs> she wants to say acknowledge we're friends or something. You told me to stand up for myself, so that's what I'm doing. Hold on a second. Enough chatter. Get your sorry butts over here now. We depend on each other. Admit it, Jenny. Alright, it doesn't cost anything, just do it. Come on, Jenny, it's not a big deal. Just say it. Yeah, exactly. This is your last warning. I'm not going to tell you again. Of all the challenges our tiny hero had faced, this was perhaps her toughest. You aren't alone, Jenny Leclou. You don't need to pretend anymore. As hard as it was to say it, Jenny knew deep in her heart it was true. Fine! Susie Glad, you are my friends. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> okay. Thank you, friend. Oh, I guess so lame. <laughs> okay. All right. Now let's get out of here. Yeah, I've got them. Safe and sounds. I'm bringing them, bringing them in now. What the? Meow. <laughs> You'll never catch a copper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keith. Sorry, Mrs. L Mr. Glue. Well, do you have them or not? I thought I did. Where did she go? Oh, don't tell me it was the gravedigger that killed uh, Dean Strasbury. Really? Nah. The garbage man? <laughs> I t I'm so confused. <laughs> How does she know, man? Oh god, is she went to exhume the body? I think she did. Oh god. Oh, is he not alive at all? Ugh. Is he not dead at all? Do I mean, I meant? Is he just like paralyzed? Oh. The... Oh shit. Yeah. He's still alive. He was just paralyzed or something. Oh my goodness. Holy moly. Oof. My head. Thank goodness it worked. Is this... This is our mom. For sure. Oh, how wonderful to hear your voice. I was having the strangest dreams. What's wrong? 
I almost didn't make it. But you did. Now, we've got a lot of work to do. But they planned this whole thing. I knew it. <laughs> nice one, Jenny. Jenny? Jenny? <laughs> Surprised to see me? I am only a child after all. What is she? How did you? It was really quite simple. Once I realized Mr. Strasbury knew he was going to die. What proves that he knew he was going to die? Uh, did he take out the trash or something? Trash? And... Spoon in his pocket? Nah. Did he, he move all of his appointments or something? I don't know. Let's make a deduction. Why would the Dean now take out the trash two days early? And why would he cancel all his meetings on Friday? Unless he knew he wasn't going to be there. This was the key piece of, in of information I needed. Once I considered the possibility that Mr. Strasbury knew he was going to die on Thursday, everything started to fall into place. But consider this, if someone knew they were going to die, wouldn't they do everything in their power to escape their fate? And yet, the Dean didn't. There was only one explanation, he staged his own death. Okay, how do we, how do we prove this? Uh, oh. The field guy to fascinating Flora? He knew about the... He knew about the thing? The plants? Right outside? Uh... Wait... I'm just gonna put the plant here. See if this... See if this holds up. It's no secret that the Dean is an avid gardener, but some people might not know he authored a book about exotic plants and their natural remedies. One of the Dean's assistants told me about the exotic plants he cultivates in his greenhouse. Some with quite remarkable properties. He knew how you were going to die, Mr. Strasbury. Poison! He knew because you made it yourself from one of your plants. A poison that you had an antidote for. That would be the methods, but you couldn't work it alone. You needed an accomplice, someone to revive you when the time was right. What proves Mom and the Dean were working together? Hmm, let's see. Uh... Ooh, the strange... Yeah, we found it in uh, Mom's laboratory. We knew it. And obviously then she told CJ to go wake up the doctor. Uh, wake up the Dean. In the basement of my house, on my dad's old dusty desk, I found a recently used vial. The residue was purple, the same color as the marks on the Dean's neck. In the jail, Mom knew she was running out of time. So she entrusted CJ to finish what she had started. To revive the Dean from his deathly slumber. He plotted together to st stage Mr. Strausberg's death. It was a simple scheme. Poison him with a plant and return after the funeral to revive him. You had intended the death to appear natural, but not everything went according to plan. What went wrong with their plan? Um, let's see. Uh, perhaps this, the cart, and the electrified shock? I think so. Uh, let's see. So this probably wasn't according to plan. And um, myself? I guess? 
No. Wait, uh, really? I don't know. Let's see, let's try. After the poison was administered, the Dean intended to give Mom his ring. But he accidentally dropped it, and he got stuck in the electrified track of the ladder. When he bent down to retrieve it, he was electrocuted and thrown from the black balcony. Earlier, the Dean had told me that he was meeting Mom in the library. That was a mistake. If I hadn't gone there to find Mom, she might still have escaped before the police arrived. Getting caught hadn't been part of the plan. Oh ho ho, quite remarkable, Jenny. And you worked out all that by yourself? Yes, that's how you did it. But the real question is why? Well, that's a uh, that's all a bit more complicated, I'm afraid. It was a rhetorical question, Mr. Strasbury. I know why you're working together. But first, I have to tell you about aliens. What? Oh, is this the writer's phone? Is it going off? <laughs> I think so. I think they're the Council of Three. The uh, the Council of Three. I think it's below. Uh, it's our mom and Dean and someone else. Perhaps Susie's mom. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, this is exciting! What an incredible adventure this turned out to be. Jenny's growing up and discovering her full potential. And to think I did it all without anybody dying. Hello? Richards? What do you think of the new scenes? Aren't they wonderful? Oh, is, is, is... I beg your pardon? He's gonna love it, I'm sure of it. Trick you? Certainly not. But don't you see? It all works out perfectly this way. I can already picture where the next book will start. Oh god. You're not serious. But... I didn't promise anything, but there must be another way. Just give me more time. Cancelled? Richard, please. Richard? Hello? Hello? Oh, God. Oh, I told him to kill someone. <laughs> it's no good. They won't publish it unless someone dies. But I can't do it. I just can't. Come on, Arthur. Jenny's whole world hangs in the balance. Decades of work. It can't all end now. Uh, I have to. It's like Jenny's mom always says. A great detective knows the right decision is often the hardest to make. And I am a great author of detective stories. But, I can't pick. What should I do, Rufus? I don't know, Rufus. <laughs> Brilliant, yes. You're always right, old friends. I'll, left, I'll let fate decide. Oh, is it fate? It's me. I'm gonna have to decide, I guess. Oh, God. Oh, is it, oh here it goes. Oh my goodness. Oh no, it's not actually letting me decide, it's just gonna... Oh no, it's actually... Okay, who dies? Oh my god, what? Are you serious? No one. Choose victim. No one. No one. Don't let me put... Oh my god. Oh, frick. Oh man, how can I choose? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh uh, in, an act, in an act of self-altruism, Jenny takes her own life to save her, her own mother and Dean Strasbury. <laughs> oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> oh no, oh, guys, guys and girls, you gotta forgive me. <laughs> I can't pick between them two, I just gotta sacrifice myself, I don't know. What have you what would have you chose? Oh my god. This is my final decision. Fate has spoken. But is it is she is she certain? 
once the choice is made, there's no turning back. Oh my god, don't make me choose again. Just choose it. <laughs> oh god, alright. I'm sorry, Jenny, I really am. I mean, you were wonderful and all, but... Oh, I can't choose between them two, it's just not fair. I'm sorry. And what a plot twist it would be, right? So... Oh, make a great story. Wait, Jenny wasn't an option, was she? Oh, Rufus, I think I need to lay down. <laughs> oh god, what, what have we done? Oh my god. I hope you can forgive me. <clears throat> As I was saying... What was that? No more interruptions! The tremors were getting more violent and more frequent. Please! I'm in the middle of my astonishing uh, deno uh, denouement. Denouement? Denouement? I don't know how to read that. Everyone in town thinks CJ is crazy, a madman spouting wild theories about aliens and hidden forces at work in Narsetan. But all the strange phenomena he's seen are real. And the culprits are men, not monsters. Alright, uh. What do I know about Hartleton's secret history? Okay, let's go for it. Uh, the Council of Three, obviously, and these uh, receptors as well. So let's let's place this one here and this one. Hartleton is built on top of some kind of energy source, something special. I uncovered the secret laboratories of Professor Zazer. He ran experiments to study the unique properties of Earth's resources, and his research was founded by a shady organization called the Council of Three. One of the experiments went tragically wrong and caused the collapse of the quartz mines. They covered it up and blamed the miners, and yet the experiments didn't stop. Instead, they built an even bigger facility. Years after the accident in the mines, an even greater tragedy struck Earthton. Only this time, the townspeople didn't know. I don't fully understand it, but something happened to the whole town. And wherever we were, we aren't there anymore. What? The rest of the world thinks we disappeared. What? At first I thought I was solving two separate mysteries, but then it hit me like a ton of used books. The two were inextricably linked. And that's how I know your motive for staging the deed's death. Uh, why did Mom and Dean Strasbury stage the Dean's death? Because he's a part of the Council of Three? wasn't working for the university. He was working for Zazer's machines, all under the watchful eye of the Council of Three. The Dean is part of the Council of Three, or at least he works for them. After Dad's death and the subs sub subsequent cover-up, Mr. Strasbury struggled with the burden of truth. He had devoted his life to educating the townspeople. He regretted lying to them, and so he planned to reveal the truth during his retirement speech. Though her own investigation, Mom concluded that Dad had died under suspicious circumstances. Or through, sorry. Uh, she confronted the Dean. Racked with guilt, he confessed and begged for her forgiveness. Instead of letting anger cloud her judgement, Mom saw an opportunity. And together, you concocted a plan to bring down the organization from the inside. What a brilliant mind you have, Jenny Leclou. Julie, I believe you underestimated this girl. You could have gotten yourself killed, but I didn't. But what if you had? I'm not a kid anymore. I have to make my own decisions, or uh, choices. A flower cannot blossom without light. Jenny had risked everything to save her mom. I... I'm sorry, Jenny. Accept the apology. You were running out of time to save Mr. Strasbury. I wasn't... I was trying to protect you. I know. 
Yeah, we just have to accept her apology. I mean, how could I refuse it? She's only she only had our best interests at heart. Uh, I should have trusted you. But you were wrong. Dad is still alive. I just apologized. No, not about that. Everyone presumed Dad died in a lab explosion. So did I, until today. But then I started finding secret messages all over town. They led me to a secret room under the graveyard. And there, on a small television, I saw him. Henry? Dad is alive! But he's trapped on the other sides. And he's been trying to contact us this whole time. The other sides? What? He made it back? Then the experiment worked. Exactly. But if he made it back, then that, that means... We can all get back. Wait, what? Where the hell? We need to get that machine right away. No. First, we need to find Professor Zazer. So that's the experiment they were running. They like shifted uh, between parallel universes or something? Dimensions? What the hell is going on? Select wisely. Uh, one, two, or three. Oh, I have no idea, dude. Um, uh, three. Oh god. going on what what the fuck oh no is this the end to be continued no <laughs> no what happened <laughs> In loving memory of my mum and Barrington. Uh, oh my god. Oh, well, he was no puzzle unsolved. Until next time, Joe and Ben. Yeah, you bastards. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, thank you, Joe Russ, and thank you, Ben Tillett, for this amazing little game. This was super cool, man. This was really fucking cool. From the the art, from the gameplay to the story, everything like amazing. Really cool piece of uh, indie gaming right here. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did. I hope you've been following the story from episode one. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more happier. Uh, I mean, the ending was a bit abrupt, but I get that. Leave us on the cliffhanger, you know? That's how they get us. That's how they get us. <laughs> so I'll definitely come back and um, <laughs> a special thanks to Tilly. That's cool. Um, definitely come back and uh, check the next game out. For sure, for sure. I'm going to put it on my list straight after this, uh, this ending. But yeah, uh, I really enjoyed my time. I hope you guys did too. Uh, I'll see you all in the flip side. Plant Powers out.